All right, everybody, let's talk about Fast Chat by Kuna and the various hardware configurations that it can support. Now, if you would like to learn how to set up Vicuna from the very beginning, we do have a video on this channel walking you through it step by step. But this video will discuss the configurations that Vicuna can support, including multiple GPUs, a single GPU, underpowered GPUs, CPUs only, Max, and as an added bonus, getting the web UI up and running. Let's get started. So what happens if we have an underpowered GPU? Well, fortunately, we have 8-bit quantization, which takes the matrix multiplication and does most of it in 8-bit, only doing the outliers in 16-bit. If we look at the command line here, we see the tag load 8-bit, which forces it to use 8-bit quantization. So let's throw this in the command line and see what happens to our memory usage and how the model behaves. Once we execute this command in the command line, it should only take a few seconds for it to finish. But what we're going to see is instead of all of this GPU's RAM being consumed, only a portion of it. Normally, when I run this command without the load 8-bit flag present, it would have consumed nearly all of the RAM present for my GPU. Though, when we look at it now, we clearly see that only about 50% of my available RAM is being used by the model. We can now go ahead and ask the model a question. In this case, we're going to ask it, can you write me a Java program that can add two integers? And sure enough, we get a response. And since we're running in GPU mode, it is pretty responsive. What if you have multiple GPUs? How can you leverage that? Let's say you have two RTX 2080s, they have 8 gigs of memory each, you'd like to be able to utilize all 16 gigs. Well, you can with the NUMS GPU flag, as we can see here on this command line. So what this does is it allows parallelism to utilize all of the RAM across all of your GPUs. So let's throw this in the command line. Let's look at our memory usage and see how this works. Unfortunately, I only have the one GPU. So we'll be setting NUMS GPU to one, but if you were to have multiple, you could just set the number to however many you have available. Now that we can look at the memory usage though, without the load eight bits, unfortunately, much more memory is being used, but the model seems to be behaving as we would expect it to, with the model responding fairly quickly. The follow-up question will be a simple, can you divide this number by this number? And as we can see, the model performs well. What if you don't have a GPU? Well, fortunately, you can still run by Kuna. All you have to do is use the device flag, as with this command line here, and it will utilize your CPU instead. Now, a couple of caveats. This model will run significantly slower on CPU and also use a lot of system memory. 30 gigabytes for the 7 billion parameter model and 60 gigabytes for the 13 billion parameter model. Loading with 8-bit should help there as well, but it will still use up a lot of system resources. Now let's throw this in the command line. Let's see how it functions. Look at system resources. Now as with the other models, we can go ahead and execute this command line, but it will take significantly longer this time due to being on the CPU. Though once it's done loading, we will be able to ask the same questions that we could with GPUs. For example, I'm going to ask the model if it can divide 2 by 2. Though unfortunately, due to what we have mentioned before with it running in CPU mode, this will take a significant amount of time. This is unfortunately due to the computational differences between CPUs and GPUs, so nothing can be done to fix this. One eternity later. While this of course took some time to finish, we do see some oddities in the response as well, especially here with the word provide. What if you have a Mac? You're still in luck. You can use the device MPS flag alongside the load 8-bit flag to be able to run this on Apple Silicon as well as AMD GPUs. Unfortunately, I don't have a Mac to test this on, but I am going to be doing some benchmarking on a MacBook Pro that I'm getting access to this weekend. I'll give you some results on Monday. So let's move on to getting the web UI up and running. 
there's three command lines that we need to run in order. First, we need to get the controller up and running. We do that with this command line here. Let's run it through and see what this looks like. We want to give this command enough time to finish running. Next, we're going to need to get the model worker up and running. You're going to want to use the settings you've been using with the command line interface. In my case, I just use the load 8-bit command and let it run with CUDA. But we'll use this command line and modify it appropriately. Let's throw it in the command line, see how that looks. It is worth noting that this may take a little bit of time to finish running. You want to give it enough time to finish though before we spin up the actual Gradio web application. Finally, we just need to start our Gradio web server. That's going to be with this command line. Let's run it through, see what it looks like. Fortunately, this should finish fairly quickly. And once it does, we can go ahead and navigate to port 7860 on our local host to see our server. And now we have our own chat interface up and running. Let's test it out and see how it works. ceases to amaze me. We hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please like and subscribe. And let us know in the comments what you'd like to see next. Have a good one.